Hello everyone, Nazo the Hedgehog here, and welcome back to more Let's Play Trails of Cold Steel. And today I got my husband here, so please sign in. Hello, I am Dr. Styline. Mm-hmm. Over here, sign in. Yep. And we're resuming the game. Mm -hmm. uh, you missed a lot. We're on chapter four. Chapter four. Yeah, I found out about the experiment. I don't see any people in this part of the you, you, you what? Find this here if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, All right, Fee. Uh, here are my conditions. If I win this duel, I, I want apologize you to tell me about deeply. your past, <laughs> your personal history. Yeah, I found out about your experiment that you did At of first, with mine and Sonic's DNA. From the moment we first met, I could tell you were holding back. Drop, my... And considering your build, it, it wasn't your much. combat proficiency is extraordinary. <laughs> it's simply too far removed. Well, at least it's better than uh, sword. how Hero feels about no the situation. Doubt. Really? What? Yeah. Yes, Hero feels. All things considered, feast strength is... Uh, he's not too happy. Especially with Jet Mace, mostly, you but yeah. <laughs> I can't say I've ever oh, thought yes. of the Jaegers in a particularly favorable no. light. Yeah, because Jet pretty much did the thing with uh, Dragonfire, and yeah, he's not too happy light. about that. Hero's not too happy about that. Because we've been raised with such strongly opposing <laughs> values, I could not accept you. Uh, what However, I know of Jet is he's I was quite mistaken. the troublemaker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After hearing uh, Elliot's story... Oh I asked myself again why it was that I felt well, such really resistance to fighting to alongside you. I tried to ascertain <laughs> my own feelings, slowly and carefully. And that was when I finally realized, during all these months we spent together, I've known deep down that you were worthy of my trust. Our yeah. values had nothing to worthy do with our judgment. It. it came from my heart alone. <sighs> but in my stubbornness, I refuse to acknowledge that one simple truth. How was the convention in my heart, anyway? I already deemed you worthy of trust. Yet in my yeah, mind, you went to a I science convention. I suspect uh, it, that it contradiction well. was what prevented us from using our arcs to fight as one. Well, in my opinion, you were, so, you were being very that's how it was. Did well, you know about this? Foolish. Yeah. <laughs> during our fight with that monster. Well, I don't have to worry about that. I mean, you aren't the only one who thought we couldn't get along. <laughs> Finitivus <laughs> might be the only one that could match it in smarts, but even up on you ever accepting me, I see. But he's off doing his own what does thing. What to do with wanting to know about my past? Why do you want to know? He mm -hmm. can be quite the character, but uh. <laughs> when I was at the convention, it's I had to deal with Doctor Egg. I want to know again. because I like you. Ugh. I mean, I'll, at, at first, when I, I first met him, he had great promise. When I'm not able to understand those I've taken an smart, interest in or have a high opinion, time I, I felt like this several months ago with Reem, and I feel yeah, the same way now. It wasn't exactly who I. That's why I want to know your history. Right. I want to know what shaped you into who you are now. Ugh. That said. This is simply an act of self-indulgence on my part. Nothing more, nothing less. <sighs> well, that's what they always say. I'm not sure what to nothing say. Less. That's pretty much. All right. We really are something else. That's fine. I don't mind telling you. Less, it but taking your spoils by all. force is the Jaeger's way through and through. <laughs> is that okay with you? <laughs> it's fine. Because I have no intention of thinking of my reward as a spoil of battle. I'd much rather consider it an honor, bestowed for a hard-won victory. Fine by me. You 
just talk things out. Why do you even need to fight now? <laughs> they don't get it. <laughs> Alright, I'll officiate your duel. Neither of you need to hold anything back. If I think it's getting too dangerous, I'll step in and stop the fight. Very well. Thanks. Oh, and they're powering up. Go! Shatter! Looks like they're evenly matched. Target locked. Really? You had to stop when they were doing their strongest move? <laughs> I, I, I couldn't even tell who won. What about you, Reen? I feel bad saying this after volunteering to be the judge, but as far as I could tell, it was a draw. Really? Huh. Well, I suppose it is what it is. I'll simply have to continue my training and challenge you again another time. And don't forget, I still wish to duel you as well. Wait, oh boy. <laughs> Honestly. Actually, I lost this one. Huh? Jaegers are at our best when we fight at night. The darkness gives us an edge. Even after I threw out a flash grenade, the duel still ended in a draw. If we'd fought during the day, I would have lost. That's... She has a point. Well then. Very well. I'll accept this victory. Hmm. Well, oh, well that means that we get to hear the story of her. Oh boy. Listen. Is that fine with you, Laura? I have no objections. We're all in this together. Okay. Hmm. Story time. <laughs> I used to be part of a Jaeger Corps called Zephyr. Before that, my earliest memories are of explosions and battlefields. I found myself wandering in a war-torn hotspot on the outskirts of some country I never even knew the name of. Jaeger Corps threw themselves into battle for the highest bidder day after day, while I wandered alone. Something a bit of a... The man who eventually took me in called himself the Jaeger King. He was the leader of Zephyr. Pretty famous Jaeger Corps. He was middle-aged, crafty, stubborn, and lucky. He always seemed so carefree, but he never let his guard down. To me, though, he was the closest thing to a father I've ever had. Ah, uh, so kind of like uh, Zephyr had their quirks, but you and nice. Kevin. As time went on, Ugh. I started helping with the cleaning, the cooking, the packing. During my free time, they started teaching me all kinds of skills I'd need to survive on the battlefield. Again, why does this day, remind me of you and Kevin? First real battle. I was ten, I think. The boss was reluctant, but after the others persuaded him, he made me a full-fledged member of the group. For the next few years, we lived and fought together. I even picked up a nickname like some career Jaegers do. Sylphied. We roamed all across the continent together. There were hard times. Times when we thought we might not live through the night, but we always did. Together. Until last year, when our boss died. No. It was a clash with another Jaeger Corps. The Red Constellation. People used to say they were the only other Jaeger Corps in West Zemuria who could match us. Their leader, a guy they called the War God, had been on bad terms with our boss for years. Eventually, the War God and the Jaeger King decided to settle things with one big duel. They kept going for three days and three nights. In the end, they both fell. After that, the Zephyr I'd grown up with disbanded. 
all the members who were left just kind of scattered. I don't know where they went. Then, just like that, I was alone again. I... I don't know what to say. After that, you ended up coming to the Academy? Yeah. Just when I was wondering what I'd do next, Sarah showed up. She said she'd been following the situation between Zephyr and the Red Constellation. That's how we first met. I told her about what happened, and she dragged me to the Academy. She introduced me to the principal, and after that... Well, you know the rest. That's quite a history. Listening to I would have to agree. It really brings into focus how limited my view of the world has been. I feel like I finally know you. There's still so much more I want to learn, of course, but at least this gives me a base to build on. How about it? Care to mix things up a little? Oh. Let's do it. Now wait just a minute. <sighs> Should have known. I guess I've had this coming since the practical exam, huh? Well, it's I at your discretion. Of a I doubt I'm the end to fight at our peak, but we'll give it a try. You've got to be kidding me! We haven't got a chance against them. Come on, this is a good opportunity to see what they can really do, right? Let's just think of this as a little bonus for our field stuff. Give it the best we can. Uh, fine. But I don't intend to hold back. So I expect the less on both of you. Not really any. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have my face. Here we go. Done. But we can't relax yet. Exactly. We... we did it. Uh-huh. <laughs> <sighs> you two. It's like they're off in their own little world. <laughs> I think we've just witnessed the birth of an unstoppable duo. Yeah, thank. Hey, what are you four doing? Busted. Uh-oh. Students, are you from one of the local high schools? We received reports of a group causing a terrible racket in the park. What in Adios's name were you doing? Huh. Uh, what, sir, that this isn't what it might seem like. There's a perfectly reasonable, uh, though admittedly rather complicated, explanation for all of this. Um, we're very sorry for any trouble we've caused. Yes. We tried to minimize the disturbance to others, but Apology. it seems we were totally successful yeah. there. Hmm. Good grief. Perhaps dueling in the park wasn't as good of an idea as it first seemed. Maybe the underground tunnels would have been better. You know, it's a little late for such deep insights. Besides, who do you think were the ones who started this? Don't just act like you're some innocent bystanders. <laughs> Ooh, you're moving up oh, in the world. <laughs> I've got a little reward here for you. Keep up the good work. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much where we have to uh, learn about um, the location by actually being in the location. Are they all still asleep? It's almost time for breakfast. Land first hand. Oh, it's you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we don't need to keep it What's wrong? You look exhausted. Those memories. <laughs> Oh, you like, might say we had a pretty eventful night. Graved into my mind. <laughs> Wait, Look at <laughs> these geriatrics. On the other hand, as you can see, we have gusto to spare. Isn't that right, T? <laughs> and you call yourselves men. How can you two just waltz around like that after last night? Are you even human? Oh, well, just calm down. Wow. 
heck did you guys do last night? The two of you look like you've been chased around town by wolves, but Fee and Laura are all buddy-buddy now. Yeah, I'll catch you up on that later. First things first, let's grab the list of today's tasks from the mailbox. Uh... We're gonna be learning about another character's backstory. He had such a sweet disposition. Yeah, before he grew up to be a stubborn old nag. Stop nitpicking people's old family photos. Honestly, the governor looks the same as ever, though. Is that woman next to him your older sister or something? Close enough. She was a cousin on my father's side of the family. Since she lived quite close, she often came to visit. Now her family was just my father and I, so having her around was a big help. The way you speak about her seems to imply you no longer see her. Did she get married and move away? She died. Around six years ago. Dang. Well, I am so sorry. I see. Not. <laughs> right. It's all you deal with why you hate the nobility, right? <laughs> so... I mean, seriously. I never really planned on telling anyone about this. But considering all we've been through, I suppose it's time I told you a little more about me. It's a long story, but would you hear me out? Uh, of course. Hmm. Absolutely. Glad to. Thanks. The sister You're was welcome. nine years my senior. Why do I? Beautiful, kind to me. Now, as I said earlier, we're a family of commoners through and through. But my father proved to be a very capable government official. And eventually, he was promoted to an important government position, where he started to make a name for himself. Honesty and integrity are a core part of his work ethic. So, of course, he made his fair share of enemies. But after seeing success in a number of major projects... I mean, you technically got enemies, don't you? Inside and outside the government. Well, I got plenty of enemies. My mother died when I was still young. But Sis happened to live around here and helping us in more ways than I can count. Since she was his niece, my father always made a fuss over her. And even though she didn't live in the same house, she was like a real sister to me. A real daughter to my father. I was always so proud of her. As a child, she was practically my idol. And as you'd expect, she had countless admirers among the men of the city. But for all her popularity, she was always level-headed and sensible. I never felt I had anything to worry about. Until he appeared. He was one of my father's subordinates in City Hall. Though unlike him, he was a noble by birth. A man of high rank, too. The heir of a count. However, he had none of the arrogance or haughtiness one usually associates with the nobility. When I met him myself, he came across as an honest and loyal man. He met Sis when Dad introduced him to her one day. And eventually, the two of them fell in love and began a relationship. Despite the difference in their social status. As a child, I was frustrated beyond words. But even I had to admit that the two of them made a good couple. And Sis seemed so happy when she was with him that I had no choice but to let it go and accept their relationship. Time went on and they became engaged with Dad acting as the go-between. And that's when everything started to fall apart. Oh boy. His family couldn't have been more blatant in their attempts to undermine the relationship. Apparently, one of the four great houses, House Cayenne, proposed an arranged marriage on short notice. And the Count's family were up in arms at the thought he might choose to take a mere commoner as his wife. Dang. Since my father held an important post, they were limited in how shamelessly they could try to sabotage the marriage. And they began to harass and threaten her in secret every way they could think of. It made her life a living hell. Maybe she didn't want to cause trouble for the man she loved or... Perhaps she did it out of consideration for my father, but all that time she chose to endure it alone. She never discussed it or asked for help. And finally, it became so crushing that she took her own life. Wow. It was only afterward that my father and I learned what had really happened. It seems that at the very last, he had chosen to betray her love for him. But I told her, he said. I told her I'd treasure her as my mistress instead if she'd just accept that we couldn't be married. I... I just don't understand it. Why would she take her own life? After 
that, my father seemed to redouble his efforts. It was like watching a machine kick into high gear. With the help of his ally, Chancellor Osborne, he was able to wrest control of City Hall from the noble faction. Then, four years ago, he was appointed to his current position as governor of Heimdall. And that's how the Regnitz family came to be where it is. Wow. I don't even know what to say. So that's why you started hating nobles? Yeah. I was so furious huh. at Sis's death. My really? future needed to be directed at someone. Anyone. First I blamed her fiancé. His family. And the family of the Duke who tried to... I know if something happened to you, I would be a a devastated. devastated. The people, their culture, the entire idea of social classes. Mm -hmm. I desperately wanted this Trump to win against to you. them. To show how right I was. How wrong they were. Deep down, I knew the truth about my hate. I knew I was taking out Get my over it, who kid. Who is it. Who's speaking of nothing whatever more. your name is? You. Machias. <laughs> Machias, whatever. They may right. be in different social classes, but people are still individuals. Sis's fiancé was faithful to her. He just wasn't strong enough to shield her from all that ugliness. Despite his love. And the Count and his family were only acting in their best interests. Which is to be expected, really. Ultimately, I've had to acknowledge that not all commoners are good people, and not all nobles are unworthy of respect. Eustace might not have done much to change my opinion, but getting to know you two showed me that there are nobles who live up to that name. Machias. I have no idea how my father feels about all of this, but this is how I've come to feel. I see. You have my thanks. I'm glad you felt you could talk to us about it. <laughs> Still, I don't think it hurt to be a bit more honest with yourself. If you're willing to admit all of that, maybe you can find it in you to be friends with Eusis too. Are you kidding me? I might accept that not all nobles are bad, but that arrogant, self-centered fool can go choke on a palm. He's mocking me for spending so much time studying or telling me I need to get out more. I don't think he goes quite that far. Besides, I don't think he does it on purpose. He doesn't mean any harm. That's the most irritating part! He does it without thinking! <sighs> wow. Well, that was a good coffee break, wouldn't you say? So the tiara really was in there, huh? Now I'm wondering if the last passenger who stepped off the tram was Phantom Thief B himself. I don't remember there being any unusual passengers on board, though. I see. So you have no idea who Phantom Thief B could have been then? To have done so much. Mm, something no tells me it's the driver himself. Covering his tracks. I'll say. But hey, at least we were able to get the okay. tiara back. Smells well, that's good enough. I mean, look at how he's acting. Why are you staring at me like that? I think it's time we put an end to this little charade. Don't you, Baron Blue Blanc? Or should I call you Phantom Thief B? Call that. What? Hmm. <laughs> uh, this, yeah. this savory taste is why the unripe fruit is the most delectable of all. Wait, he's where? We I'm on. sorry. Clown really. Give him a That's better the voice. That's a massive B. Allow me to introduce myself once again. I am Phantom Thief Blue Blanc, otherwise known Blue 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 as Blue Blanc. Yeah. Are you kidding me? What kind of name is Blue Blanc? I have assumed Phantom Thief Blue Blanc. I didn't kidding me. Right. Seriously. Oh, right. Uh, someone really get me a cup of tea. Covering. This is just my... Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's already some on the table. It's hard to believe you were serious to hide your hand mm -hmm. to begin with. Your disguises? Nothing short of perfect, I have to admit. But with all the work you've put into okay, this, Bob, what I suspected means? you might come check on us Seriously. at the end of your little game. Ha! Ah, oh, I see! Excellent deductive reasoning! Simply splendid! I just made it! Something like this. Why go through all the trouble? Absolutely fantastic. 
What better than the names on this game? Right. There's nothing more to discuss. That is a crime. Indeed. A crime we will not allow to go unpunished. Spirited youths you are. I can't. No words can express. How can someone hot do that? Name have that Just power. Just a little trick I like to keep up my sleeve. Uh, Again, you have, Again, you have the topaz and some other stuff, so you could do that as well. <laughs> this my name is a phantom thief. You know, right? My name is Dr. He disappeared Star. again. <laughs> Seriously, it's it quite a little fits trick. My <laughs> he might still be nearby. Yep. Yeah. Let's search the area. What? Phantom Thief Blue. What? See, am I dreaming? Is this a nightmare? Well, we're done with the Phantom person. We are going to a. Uh, to a high school that's only suited for girls, apparently. I'm wearing the same uniform as Reen's that's sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go to St. Australia too. So the famous St. Australia girls school is around here, huh? It's supposed to be a combined middle and high school exclusively for the young ladies of the nobility. Yeah, this is one part of the capital that the masses have no reason to visit. Although I can at least support the school's commitment to fostering chastity and rejected materials. You seem to know an awful lot about a fancy girl's school. <laughs> this is all just common knowledge. Oh, seriously. Anyway, let's go and wait by the front gate. Yeah, those were the instructor's orders. I'm feeling kind of nervous, actually. Why would you? <laughs> to men, this academy must seem clad in the mysterious, impenetrable aura of feminine nobility. So we're just standing there. I was wondering, did you not want to come here, Laura? <laughs> My father did recommend it to me, but they offered no classes in the martial arts. That alone was reason enough to look elsewhere. <laughs> I can totally understand that. Though I get the feeling Laura would cause a real uproar if she went to a school for genteel young ladies. Yeah, I can picture the chaos now. <laughs> oh? I have a number of acquaintances who attend there, and from all I hear, it does seem to be a wonderful school. I've heard that even Princess Alfin herself is a student there. I've heard that too. Princess who? You've seriously never heard of her? I know you're not from Arabonia, but even still... <laughs> to be fair, I wouldn't be surprised if plenty of Erebonians didn't know who she is. Princess Alfin is the daughter of our reigning emperor, His Majesty Emperor Egypt. She's supposed to be as sweet as an angel and popular with everyone. Is that so? <laughs> Actually, I believe she's the same age as me. I've had the opportunity to meet her once before. She truly is as charming as the river suggests. I figured as much. I've seen photographs of her plenty of times in magazines, though I've never had the opportunity to meet her. It sounds like she's in the same school year as Elise, come to think of it. She has a twin brother, too, Prince Cedric. He's the crown prince of Erebonia. Oh, right. I think I've seen a picture of the prince in a magazine before. Dark blonde hair, like Eustace's brother, right? Oh, I think you're thinking of Prince Oliver. He's Cedric and Elfin's older brother. Why isn't he the crown prince, then? I've heard the reason is that his mother was a commoner. It seems like a stupid reason. Wow. Succession. So just because you're not, uh, uh, that's stupid. A lot lately. He made a big splash when he came back from the borough aboard that airship. Uh, you know the one, right? Uh, you must be referring to his return aboard the Arcel after the crisis in the borough was put to rest. Yeah, I remember seeing that. It really made a big impact. I'd never seen an airship that looked so white and elegant before. I believe my father went to welcome the prince back in his capacity as Imperial Governor, too. And, yeah, now that you mention it, that does seem to be when I started hearing his name around a lot more. Oh, you're all here already! 
Oh, Group B. Ah, you made it. <laughs> it's good to see you all again. <laughs> You're a bunch of early birds, aren't you? Well, we just about finished up everything we had to do when we got the call to meet here. Were you able to finish up everything on your end, too? <laughs> As if we'd leave any loose ends. If not for our unfamiliarity with the city, we would have been finished this morning. <sighs> Every time. Looks like <laughs> these two to kiss and make up will be an uphill battle. <laughs> well, some say that when someone gets under your skin, it means you really care about what they think. Wait, did you two... <laughs> I figured the girls would be the first to notice. <laughs> of course. I, um... I apologize for any worry I've caused you. We're fine now. Really? That's great! <laughs> it sure is. Maybe after this field study is over, we can get together and spend the night talking in one of our rooms. Sounds good. <laughs> the thought of a Class 7 pajama party makes me a little embarrassed. That's gross. Girls are feeling best. <laughs> Girls and sleepovers go together like jam and toast, huh? Dang. But don't knock that jam and toast. It's good. That must be Heimdall Cathedral's bell. It has a solemn, stately sound, wouldn't you say? It sounds so different from how it does in the Oz district. Though that makes sense considering the distance. That bell ringing must mean it's five o'clock. Which means it's almost the time we were supposed to be here. Green? Elise, what are you doing here? The sister. I guess this is your school, so where else would you be? Um, yes. I see all of your classmates are with you, too. <laughs> it's only been a week since we saw you, hasn't it? Dang, it's been a well, week. We were Dang. Told to meet here. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you the ones? The nine guests I was told to expect at five o'clock sharp? Well, there are nine of us in class seven. That's a little s Wait, suspicious. What? Then that would mean you're the one we were told wanted us to come here? Actually, I suspect that would be a friend of mine. Why does she always have to be such a mischief maker? I swear. She could have at least given me a little warning that you are coming. Um, Elise? Anyway, where are my manners? Welcome to St. Astraya Girls' School. I hope you'll enjoy your visit. Right this way. Oh, fancy music. What's in here? It looks like an indoor garden. This is the Academy's Rose Garden. The person who called you here is waiting inside. Mm -hmm. Who did call us here anyway? Whoever they are, they must have considerable social standing. Your Highness, I brought the guests. Thank you. Please show them in. Oh. No way. Hey, Elise, is that... You don't need to ask when you already know. Now, if you'll follow me. <gasps> I... I knew it! My. And there's the princess. <laughs> of course. Ladies and gentlemen of Class 7, my name is Alfin, Alfin Rice Arna. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. Uh, oh boy, you. she reminds me of Amy. Amy Rose? Amy and Cream. Oh, oh, oh dear. Let's see where this goes. Cheer up! Um, I was only trying to tease you a little. 
Don't you have something you wanted to discuss with everyone? Please, go right ahead. Jeez, she's not too happy now. Oh, well, that aside, <laughs> well, she's not. it's been a long time since I last saw both of you, Mrs. Amora. I'm glad to see you're both well. Likewise, Your Highness. <laughs> You've become even more fetching since we last met. Aw, thank you. I was rather hoping that you'd decide to enroll in Santa Dryad too. But it seems you chose to attend Thor's after all. Well, I've committed myself to following the way of the sword. And Thor's gives me a place to hone my skills. <laughs> I apologize for not being able to live up to your expectations. Ah, <sighs> first I lost Angelica to Thor's. Then you too. Perhaps I should just train for their the next other. year myself. Mm -hmm. Your Highness. Your this is so... <laughs> Got you to look. But, but I... Hmm. Oh dear. Well, she seems lively. <laughs> she seems far more easygoing than I was expecting. I've heard plenty about her, but none of that prepared me for meeting her in person. So, this is what it's like to be in the presence of royalty. It's actually rather overwhelming. I can see why people always compare her to an angel. <laughs> me too. The letter. Please don't worry about me. Well, I still have much to learn before I feel like I deserve my status among the nobility. I've been blessed with wonderful friends, and I'm enjoying life here at the Academy. Well, she does seem to have at least one wonderful friend. Kind of an understatement when that friend happens to be Princess Elfin. <laughs> wow! I'm very happy to finally be able to meet you, Reen Schwarzer. Elise has told me so much about you. Oh boy. Your Highness! Um, I'm honored that you'd say so. Elise always mentions in her letters what a great friend she has. As her brother, I wanted to thank you for that. Rain! Oh, it's so refreshing. You're every bit the person Elise says you are. Perhaps even more so. Huh? Actually, I have a teensy-weensy favor to ask. Do you think I could join Elise in thinking of you as my dear brother as well? Wow! <laughs> what? I your Highness! You see, Elise has spoken of you so often that in my heart, you've already come to feel like family. Dang! I'm ready to meet you. I fear I simply can't suppress these feelings any longer. I have two brothers already, of course, so I'm sure it won't take long to suggest. <laughs> I couldn't possibly. I mean... That's enough, Your Highness. Aw, don't I'm be so stingy. Surely it wouldn't hurt to share him with me a little. Dang. Anyway, that aside, the reason I called you here today was not to talk with me. There is someone else who would like to meet you. Why? It's not like we're famous. Who do you mean? What? Someone else? A guitar? Uh, no, so a seems lute? confused about it. <laughs> oh, it seems he's arrived! Oh! <laughs> I apologize for keeping you waiting. Of course, her oldest brother. I see. It's a pleasure to see you again. A sibling <laughs> adventure. And you as well, young lady. Well, I trust everyone here has been making themselves comfortable? Yes, everyone except for me. Who's this then guy? again, I'm not a game I'm not sure. Exactly, okay, you're just watching me. with me. I serve as a music instructor He's in the holding an instrument. Of Please don't play a little diddly diddle. I am ever on the song that's that most likely gonna sound mind. dreadful. Please. <laughs> My trees, I brought at a girls' school. But whose pulse would not quicken wandering into this untainted cloister of dew-eyed maidens? Ah, oh, the romance. Could he be? Ow! He totally ended that. He deserved that. Ah, I can always count on you to never miss a beat, my dear sister. Wait, so this is... Wow! 
Indeed. Prince Olivert. Olivert, right, Oliver. say Arnold. Pr also known uh, as the unscrupulous uh, uh, Oliver. Uh, Prince Olivert. <laughs> yeah. Olivert. Yeah. Can I meet? Pleasure to finally meet you, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen of Class Seven. Olivert. How can someone by the name of Pr What in the world? Are these? Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go and make myself some more tea. Oh, okay. Oh, excuse me for a moment. <laughs> I have to admit, I was surprised to learn that you're the chairman of the board of directors, Your Highness. I'd heard that the chairman was a member of the Imperial family, but still. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Who would expect the infamous prodigal son to chair a committee at a prestigious academy like Thor's? I suppose it's not surprising they'd rather keep it hushed up, though. It wouldn't exactly be great for the school's image. That's surprisingly forthright coming from you. Is it really true, though? I mean... That you were the one responsible for establishing Class 7, Your Highness? Indeed, I was. So it was his idea it's for this whole class. That a member of the Imperial family serves as chairman of the board. At first, I wore the title and name only, but I had a change of heart after my vacation in Liberal two years ago. You were in Liberal back then? That would put your visit during the incident that occurred there, correct? Right. Hmm. All I've done since I returned to Erebonia has been inspired by my experience during the crisis in Liberal. As a result, fruitless though they may prove to be, I've set a number of plans in motion. One of which is to bring the winds of change to Thor's military academy. A gust of fresh air, if you will. Winds of change, <laughs> huh? I can only assume you're no, referring to fresh air here. Then the one who decided to throw both commoners and nobles into the same class was... Yes, the idea was mine. Although of course, it was all his idea. ...to have a high aptitude with the Arcus units, too. Some idea. Right? I think I'm finally starting to understand the reasoning behind Class 7, mm -hmm. and why we're being sent all over Erebonia on these field studies. To show us firsthand and give us cause to consider the conflict between the two factions. Uh, it looks like Kevin that just opened up a window. Field studies. Is it not, Your Highness? Mm -hmm. That is one of the reasons, yes. However, my foremost intention was to show you that during your lives, you will encounter many obstacles and conflicts. Not just between factions, but between the capital and the provinces, tradition and technology, even between nations. In these turbulent times, I thought that this would provide the hands-on education today's promising youths need. Oh, so it was all his idea for the field studies, even. ...to face tomorrow's challenges head off. That makes sense. Wow, that's quite a plan. I can't help but feel a little unsure whether we can live up to such high expectations. Hearing your explanation has, at the very least, cleared up many of the doubts I've had up to this point. Class 7 does seem like an ideal environment to expand one's outlook on life. I feel like going through everything we have so far has brought us closer to doing exactly that. Yep. Marvelous. I'm so pleased to hear it. Just listening to you makes me feel even more certain. Establishing Class 7 was the right decision. Especially since while the idea itself the right is decision, not from I have no say in how the classes so. run day to exactly. day. Even so, I still hope to meet all of you at least once, if only to tell you all this. And that was when Alfin stepped in and offered to set up this little meeting. I see. <laughs> well, I could hardly refuse such a sincere request from my brother. But it also presented me a fine chance to finally meet Elise's beloved brother, as I've always wanted to. Your Highness! Uh, <laughs> oh boy. Thank you for taking the time to tell us all of this, Your Highness. I feel like now that I know, I want to live up to the promise you saw in Class 7. Thing is, am I right in assuming that Class 7 doesn't exist just to fulfill your progressive ideal? What are you... Oh? The board has its chairman, of course, but three directors besides. My older brother Rufus, Imperial Governor Karl Regnitz, 
and Irina Reinford of the Reinford Group. Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it, they do seem to have certain expectations for us. <laughs> Precisely. As I mentioned, I no longer have anything to do with how Class 7 is run. That authority lies with the directors. As you're keenly aware, Rufus and Governor Regnant sit on opposite sides of the factional divide. Oh, that sucks. Mostly involved with Class 7's technology, like the Arcus, her intentions are a mystery to me. And it's those three who decide where you'll travel for your field studies. Is that right? Hmm. When you put it that way, oh, yeah. it does make it seem like some kind of bargaining is taking place behind the scenes. You think? One of the conditions they gave in exchange for allowing Class 7 to be established. I'll admit, I hesitated to allow it, but I decided to place my hopes in you. We believed then, as we still do, that one day, you all will be a great light that can push back the darkness of this country. Again, another <laughs> game about pushing Well, I suppose when I put it that way, it sounds positively wrong. Mm -hmm. But that's just me. Don't feel too pressured by it. Your students, first and foremost, reach out and grab that fragrant rose of school life. Join a club. Eat cheap food with your friends at midnight. Fall in love. We live but once. Make your youth count. <laughs> you know, it's weird, but hearing you say that kind of takes a load off my mind. <laughs> By the way, just earlier you said that we believed the Class 7 would be a great light. Is there someone else involved with Thors who shares your vision for our class, Your Highness? There is. Principal Van Dyke. I once attended Thor's myself. <laughs> he gave my proposal to establish Class 7 his full back. I see. He's been particularly considerate toward us ever since we arrived at the Academy. While he has no direct control over the running of the Academy, he does preside over the board meetings. And above all, he's the one who assembled an excellent team to give you first-rate training. An excellent team, you say? Are you referring to Instructor Sarah? She's certainly one of them. Still, coaxing her away from her former line of work certainly played a large part in giving Class 7 a great foundation. She is, after all, one of the strongest people in the Empire. And her experience makes her strongest a Strongest person in the Empire? Instructor Sarah? One of the strongest people in Erebonia? Exactly what experience might you be referring to? <laughs> I've even heard rumors of her daring exploits myself. She was known as the Purple Lightning. Purple Lightning? Wait. Purple Lightning? I knew it. If you two have heard of it, it must be a household name among martial artists. That's right. Though I've just heard it in passing. Ah, that young ace of the Erebonian Bracer Guild. And one of the Empire's most famous bracers. She has a history full of brave feats and dangerous deeds. She was even the youngest bracer to achieve A-rank status. Back then, she was known as the Purple Lightning. Now, you know her simply as your homeroom teacher. And I think here we're going to end it. Um, so, any thoughts? Well, uh, a lot of the movement was a bit stiff, and uh, the character names... Uh, I just can't get over them. They're just absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> right. Uh, I suppose it seems like a good game. I mean, if they like uh, made like a remastered version, it'd have great promise. But so far, it, uh, I I tolerated it um, <laughs> so far. All right. But, so uh, yeah. um, please sign off. No. This is Dr. Starline signing off. And this is Nazo signing off. Thank you guys again for watching. Make sure you comment, rate, subscribe, turn on notifications. I'll leave uh, Starline's channel in the description below. I don't know if he's coming back for the next part, but... Um, but yeah, I will see you guys in the next part regardless. Goodbye.